Next, we will hear about Kamunda Library updates and roadmap. Please welcome to the stage Markus Stahl. Yes. All right, let's go. Hello, Robocon. My name is Markus Stahl, and I'm a tech sharing evangelist at Avarta Systems. When I handed in my topic last October, I thought, oh, can I fill 10 minutes? And then, of course, Robocon got postponed, and now I'm a little bit afraid that I can make it in, in, in 10 minutes and should have booked a longer slot. That's why I prepared a social media pipeline on my Twitter account. So um, if this is going too fast, there's a lot of more information on uh, my Twitter account, which prematurely published all the uh, information already one hour ago, thanks to time zone issues. Um, so, Kamunda Library, I presented it in a lightning talk last year and it looked a bit like this. Um, as you can see, it obviously was my first recording I've ever made, so the resolution is messed up, you can hardly see anything. Um, but the basic idea is uh, to have complicated workflows easily being managed. So, all those squares up there, they are small robot tasks asking the Kamunda workflow engine, do you have something to do for me? And then as soon as there is a blue bubble showing up, so that's a workload, the robot framework task fetches the workload process and gives it back to, um, to the workflow engine. Now, since this was a crap resolution, I brought a slightly newer one this time, and then we are over. No, so this is how a common library works nowadays. So you have the workflow going through the process, and uh, you see there's some data in it, and it, it's interpreted. And What's new is that I uh, take uh, advantage of the BPMN error feature that uh, I can throw now in a robot task an expected business error, which is then passed on to a user who can then manually uh, correct the data and then, give, then come on and hands it back into the automated task. And then, of course, uh, I don't have to deal with different uh, result types, like if I go this way, that way, or the arrow uh, away, I can just distinguish it. In source code, this would look something like this. So those are a few of the new features in the Commander Library too. Um, usually you have this basic workflow. You fetch a workload, you do some processing. So fetch a workload is a keyword from Commander Library. Then do some processing on your own. And once you're done, you complete the task. And now the new thing is that if something goes wrong and you expect it to go wrong, you throw the beepin error. And then Commander takes care of the rest and forwards it to the uh, error handling part. Now, if something happens that you don't expect, you use the other uh, keyword up here, um, notify failure, meaning your task fails really hard with a red flag, and then you can uh, notify Kamunda about this. And you can even uh, forward a, re a retry counter. So, for example, saying, okay, retry this workload three more times, and only when the counter reaches zero, an incident is raised, and then an administrator has to look at it and then fix the workload or fix uh, the, the process instance. Now, um, before before this, I was uh, before I used Kamunda, I was uh, uh, processing batches of, of data, and the problem was I had a batch of like scanned envelopes, and if one envelope was broken, the complete batch was stuck, like in the traffic jam in my workflow. With this behavior, I can process one data set after another, and only the broken data set, that one gets stuck, but it doesn't jam my complete process. So, the talk is about what's coming next, and um, there's not much, not, not much more to come, actually, because there are a few cool stories that come after this slide. Um, there will be a few convenience in keywords in Kamunda Library 3 that help me in my use cases. So, for example, I often uh, ask for a workload, and if no workload is available, I finish the task. Um, those usually takes up like two, three lines of code. I would like to have one line for it. And very important feature also requested by the community is an implicit notification of failures. So, if test case or task fails really hard, the incident is risen automatically to Commander. So this is the Kamuna library part, but there's actually more to come because now in the, in the last weeks, uh, no new use cases uh, uh, appeared around this topic. So for example, a few weeks ago, I, I deployed a robot task inside a robot web service and deployed this one in a container and this one in Google Cloud here in Google Cloud. Now you see a log statement where you can see that a request uh, calls the container, it then starts, 
the uh, robot framework task is executed. And actually, this task is a browser library uh, task doing some web scraping, then uploading data to an FTP server. And then after 50 minutes idle time, the container shut down again. This happens a few times a day, a few times a day. And it's actually quite cheap, so I pay, I think, one cent per, per day or something for this. This is yet not uh, connected with Kamunda, but if I combine this with another project of mine, the Kamunda Topic Watcher, um, this, uh, it makes more sense. So the Kamunda Topic Watcher checks if there's workload available. And if there's something available, it calls a predefined REST endpoint. And this REST endpoint can now again be my robot framework web service wrapping this robot framework task. And if I can do this, and then do this in, for example, Google Cloud Run, I can easily scale my task. So uh, without doing any complicated configuration, I can suddenly scale up many robot framework tasks, which are then automatically um, sh uh, shut down when they are idle for 15 minutes. So this is, uh, I'm still have 10 minutes. This is awesome. <laughs> the counter isn't working. Really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> okay. Actually, seven. seven minutes. Okay, yes. All right. So, this is my last slide. <laughs> 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 yeah, as I said, so Kamunda Library, there, um, there are a few cool, still a few, uh, cool few use cases for that. So, of course, uh, if, when you, this Kamunda Library is for if you are a robot framework uh, user and engineer. This is probably the most convenient way to start using Kamunda. And there's another really cool use case because Robot Framework is, after all, still an awesome test automation framework. So you can use Robot Framework, of course, to test your uh, workflows. So if you have a process defined, um, yes, it's uh, visualized in BPMN, and uh, most people can understand you have a common uh, uh, basis to talk about this process, you still have some requirements and kind of contract what, what, what kind of uh, uh, circumstances this process has to fulfill. So um, you can now easily, of course, define the, those requirements in robot framework and then test with each new deployment of your process if the changes in the process violate the contract or not. Then on the right part, there's uh, the also, the, the new stories that appear from also from the community, like combining Kamunda and Robot Framework and Cloud, um, and Kamunda also has a new workflow engine called ZB that's not uh, a, a database backed but event uh, uh, events based, and there's already a project at the Robot Framework Market Square. I'm eager to start this one, really implementing. So, if you're using Kamunda 8, please join me in this project. And there are more projects, like if you know Asko, he will give a talk about uh, Jupyter Notebooks this afternoon. He has a cool concept of having robot tasks being unaware of Kamuna. So he has this cool carrot RCC uh, a worker that uh, is based on, 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 some, on the RCC tool from, uh, from Robocorp. And with, this, with, with his setup, the robot tasks are not even aware where the data is coming from. And as I said, there's this really cool example of having like robot framework test cases validating that your workflow is still uh, valid to the requirements that you once defined. I expected this to take like 30 minutes. I'm really glad it didn't. I hope you too. Um, <laughs> if you uh, want to know more about this, because there's a lot of blog posts and, and more uh, tutorials to come, and they're already existing, uh, follow me on LinkedIn or Scroll back five minutes and check my Twitter handle. Thank you very much. We have one question for you, <laughs> uh, since we have time. Uh, what other ways uh, exit to combine Kamunda and Robot Framework? What other ways? Yeah. Uh, besides the Kamunda library, yes. So um, this Kamunda 7, uh, uh, that, that I'm working with, it has a really rich REST API. So you can, use, you can generate any REST client from the uh, open API specification in any language that you like, but of course also in Python. And um, these uh, Kamunda unaware robots or unaware robot tasks, um, they, are pre they, are, they are called from a so-called uh, worker. So the worker is pulling uh, constantly from Kamunda asking, is there something to do? Is there something to do? And once it finds something, it starts the robot task. 
and we started implementing with the people in the sprints yesterday, uh, started in uh, Robot Worker, and I hope we will publish it this week, next week, I don't know. I'm looking forward to this. Excellent. Hey, give a big hand to Markus Stahl. Thank you very much.